fine. You are fine, sister. I believe we are on. Praise the Lord. So glad to be at his house tonight. We come together believing for good for all those watching out there. You may have seen and heard about the Woody family. We continue to remember them in prayer. But we believe his word that he has comfort for his people. And we believe that tonight. According to Isaiah 41, he, he, he brings comfort. And we're believing for this family, for several others we know we're praying for. Sometimes when we have uh, a move of God, as we did this past weekend at the revival, we'll go through some fights and some battles. But he is victorious, and we believe for it. Amen, sister. And your sister is going to lead us here. Let the weight of his glory fall on this place. Let him keep coming and keep falling. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Just a second here. Praise his name.
is a good God. He is good to give His presence to us. The Bible promises us this. He's with us always, even to the end of the world, even the end of time. He says, surely His presence then is in this place tonight. And our sister's going to lead us in this psalm tonight. Let's worship the Lord and celebrate that our Lord is here with us. You ready? You ready, sister? All right. Give him praise in the house. You are worthy, Lord, for your presence. You are worthy, Lord, for being here with us, for all that you've done and all you are, Lord. We celebrate your presence in this house tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Be praised, be lifted up on high tonight. Because, Lord, where there is great need, dear God, where there is great work, Lord, your, we believe that your love and your peace, Lord, it's going to abound even more in our time of need. We bless you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. How awesome is the Lord Most High. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, sister. Thank you, thank you. It's an awesome song. And that truly how we it's how we make it through. Staying in his presence. The presence of the Lord. Staying in his glory. I sent out a text, and some may have received it, that same God that was here at the revival is here with us wherever we are now. And his presence doesn't leave us. So again, we're glad for everyone with us. Continue to remember the Woody family, your prayers. There's a lot of other hurdles that need to be gone through, but as there, uh, some are up here in Kentucky and some are in Tennessee, pray for their safety and absolute wisdom. You also remember uh, Pastor Gary tonight. He had a health need come up. Remember him in prayer and the Morales family and so many others. And Sister Opal, if you're watching, God bless you too. And all our others are regularly watching us. We love you. 
Let us know you're watching. Always glad to hear from you. We do remind us of just a couple, few things going on. Um, as far as I know, everything is still good for the ladies' study this Friday, and that'll be this coming time at 6.30 at um, the church here. If something comes up and that changes, we'll let everybody know. I know Sister Kay was ready to share, and uh, we will keep everybody informed, but I want to go ahead and put that out for the time being. And uh, the fifth Sunday singing is going to be coming up this uh, Sunday and scheduled for it at uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock at the church here will be the singing. And we'll be looking forward to that. I'll be sharing in the morning the message, and then uh, we'll have our singing time that evening. We have a, a special singing um, couple, the, the Bilbreys will be here with us. We have our discipleship. That'll be October 4th. That should be next Friday, and that'll be uh, starting a new study in Revelation. should be an exciting study, and everybody's invited to Brother Gary and Sister Roos at 7 o'clock that Friday evening. The Hallelujah Night. Uh, scheduled up for, um, I believe, the first Saturday in November is what we got now. Details are coming. Uh, we wanted to work with the revival and then get to that, but we'll have our Hallelujah Night coming up here very, very shortly, and uh, should be some f good fun for kids and adults, and we will um, have a good time lifting up the name of the Lord Jesus that uh, afternoon, probably an afternoon, so... Look forward to all that and several other good things coming as well. So keep our church in prayer that the Lord will take us further and deeper because as our brother shared, I believe we can go from glory to glory. Amen. All right. We have been in the book of 2 Corinthians sharing with us. And I wanted to continue that study tonight. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I believe this is a good passage for us in the season we're in right now in our church. 2 Corinthians 8, and this question we want us to think about in this passage, how are we giving? How, are, how have we been giving? How should we be giving? That's, that's where we are as a church. A couple of things we're in, we've been with our church. We've had the revival that's just happened. We praise God for the services. Several lives are touched. It was good to see God ministering to people, working in lives here at the church. And the question always comes up, well, now what? Where do we do? Where, where do we go from here on that? One way I believe we truly do is by looking for how we can give because we really only keep what we give away. We really only keep. It doesn't make sense when you think about that statement, but we keep what we give away. That's how God is. He, he's given. It's his nature to give. And I believe as we give, that's one of the ways we see Revival spread and continue. Not money comes up obviously with it, but there's so many other things that we can give as well. But I believe continuing revival means that we give the the best that we have, and also in the time when we suffer loss, we've had the, some loss in our church, and sometimes we think, well, what can I do? Same thing applies. May we be giving people and just give what we have, not what we don't have, but what we do have, or help us to give of that. And tonight we're talking and looking in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And I'm going to begin reading verse 1. And I don't have the verse. We won't have, be able to have the verses up for those here tonight. But we will um, uh, encourage you to turn along with us if you, you have a, the scriptures. Uh, so we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 8. And we're going to begin reading in verse 1. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3 and verse 5 for us tonight. How are we giving? I think some of them are turning to it here, so I'll give just a second. You know, we were talking, Sister Tracy and I were talking before about kids and the different natures that kids have. And some kids can be a challenge, and then some kids can be really sweet, and they'll give you, they don't have much, but they'll give you whatever they have. When I worked in the school down in Parksville, they would try to give me their candy or their pencils or <laughs> whatever they thought I needed, they would try to give it to me, and it was really sweet to see. It doesn't, the, the point in sharing that is we don't have to have a lot to give a lot to be giving to giving people. And, and one doesn't need to be rich to be generous because it's, it's what's coming from the heart. And Paul is encouraging the Corinthian church along these lines. And we'll go ahead, if y'all are there, we'll go ahead and we'll dig it in. 2 Corinthians 8, 1. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. 
that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and deep and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely giving. And verse 5 says this, And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. Father, bless your word tonight. We're dependent on your word because it is, it is truly what gives us a foundation in times when everything else is shifting. We trust you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, amen. The Corinthian church was, was asked to give in this passage. And so what was happening here, Paul was making his way back to the church in Jerusalem and that the church in Jerusalem due to famine and other things going on, they were in great need. And so the church in Jerusalem was a giving church. They sent out all the apostles into all the world. And so uh, it was a chance to give back to the church in Jerusalem, the, the, the Jewish folks, and be able to, to donate to them. And they were asking and seeking for gifts and the Corinthian church, there had been some discussions, some promises, some things that had been said. And so Paul is kind of giving a little nudge. It's time to kind of think about heading toward those, those gifts. And um, so we, we, in the same way, we, may we have that heart to give. May we have that heart to fulfill the, the promises that we have that, that, hey, God has given to us. And we need to be willing to give to those who are in need. And so... Uh, let's talk about how we give. Let's talk for just a moment because it's, it's important. So in, in encouraging these churches to give, the apostle was talking about some other churches. So this is the church in Corinth. The reminder, Corinth is down in Greece a little bit, and Macedonia is kind of a little bit of the less prosperous folks up in the north of Greece. And so there's several churches in Macedonia. We read in verse 1. Uh, the two that are the most familiar are Philippi, the Philippians. We have that book in the Bible. And we also have Thessalonica. That was up in Macedonia. And Thessalonica, the Thessalonians. We have two books to the Thessalonians. They were familiar. And if you remember, in those, when it talks about that, that was some rough places. It was some rough places right there. But it says that these churches gave sacrificially. And so the first idea I want to share with us tonight is how we give is we need to be sacrificial givers because it says here in these verses that we just read that in um, verse 3 they gave even beyond their ability they were willing to sacrifice in how they gave and uh, if you remember Philippi that was the place Paul and Silas were put in the dungeon remember that went deep down in there and they're singing the hymns remember that that's Philippi that was a rough place for Christians and, uh, but yet, if you read Philippians, it's a book of joy, a epistle of joy that God had given them. And then in Thessalonica, there was pretty severe persecution. If you read in Acts there, too, if you read the beginning of 1 Thessalonians, you see the church had severe persecution that Paul was even afraid it might not have even gotten established because he'd only been able to be there a few weeks. But yet, it had been established. God had touched their hearts, and God was still touching their hearts. Even in severe difficulty, they were still giving. And so that's what I want to encourage us, because we realize that sometimes we, we go through it. And, and even now, uh, we know in our church there are some battles being, being fought in, in different ways. And I want to encourage us that we need to continue to be giving people. There's been a lot of good giving going on here, but we want to see that continue. Because what does it say as we remind us in the last days? The love of most will grow cold. And we don't want to see that. We don't want to see that for, for us. And we don't want to see that for this church or any church. So a little story here. There was a uh, king named Cyrus. We actually mentioned his name on Sunday in connection with something very, very different. But Cyrus, in this, according to this story, it was told about him. He was a king of Persia. And as a king of Persia, he had captured a prince and his wife. And so for his own wife, the prince said that he would give half his wealth. But for his wife, he said he would give up himself. And so Cyrus was, was moved and he released him without having to give anything. And the husband was commenting on Cyrus's goodness, but the wife didn't notice because she was too focused on her husband's sacrificial giving. And he was willing to give up everything, everything he had, even himself, for his wife. 
And so that's the idea, something of the idea that we have and the, and the example that we've been setting. We'll talk about that through Jesus in just a minute. But whether it's money or not, God blesses us when we give what we, what we can and even beyond because in that tight work, it requires faith, and that faith pleases God. It pleases God to see us give. And God will provide when we give, and it's hard for us. And sometimes it's not always the same way we give, but we will get it back. No worries about that. Because as, we, as it said, and it's almost to the point we call it cliche, but it's still true. You can't outgive God. And so that you cannot outgive God. He is, he is he's going to give and pour back to us good things. And I just want to encourage us. We're called to be obedient. We're called to be obedient to the spirit I have and probably many that are the folks here tonight and those who are watching, the Lord has spoken to your heart through the Holy Spirit and has told us to give something that we didn't want to. And uh, we did it. We, we, we did it. We went through and believed and God took care of us. He, he blessed us for doing that. And so I just want to, uh, I could give examples, you could too, and I hope we can give more examples of that. And if it's not something we practiced, may we be practicing uh, that sacrificial giving because these churches were blessed for the giving they were, they were making. Sacrificial giving. The second I want to share with us, the second idea of giving, is that we need to be willing givers. We need to be willing to give. And there's a sacrifice and there's a willingness that comes. Verse 5 that we read says this, and they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. And so they, they, were, they were giving everything they had and they were giving willingly. And, um, and so I just in reading here um, verse 3 again, I want to go back over that as well. It says that they were freely willing as they gave. And so Paul wanted to stir the, the Corinthians' hearts to, to give too. And so we're, again, he's talking about two separate churches, not the Corinthians. But he's saying, hey, that willing giving is awesome because it says they were willing of themselves in verse 3. And then in verse 8, the Bible says this, and I, I, we will read this now. I speak not by commandment, but I'm testing your sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. If anybody's ever had someone kind of push them really hard to give, it's not a pleasant thing, is it, to be kind of, hey, you need to really give me this. We've all been there, whether it's been somebody in our family or somebody, maybe some organization, they push really hard. Well, we, we do, we know how that feels, and Paul is here saying, it's not, I'm not looking to command you, but I'm trying to give you an opportunity to step out and be willing. Trying to kind of remind them, just a little nudge, not really a command, he's saying here, to give, but try to push them along just a little bit. Hey, let's, let's head more toward the giving here and be willing to do this because that willing heart matters to God. And that's what Paul is coaxing the Corinthians towards that. And so God has called us to encourage us and to have that volunteer voluntary spirit that God loves. God will use the unwilling, that's for sure. Pharaoh was not particularly willing because if you remember, the Israelites took a whole lot of stuff with them when they left Egypt. God will use the unwilling. Oh, it's a precious thing, and we'll talk about it next time. God loves the cheerful giver, the willing giver, the one who's willing to step up and, and, and make a difference out of his heart. Uh, we had a lot of will and givers. You know, we have disasters that happen so often. And in the Assemblies of God, the ministry that deals with disasters so often is called Convoy of Hope. And we had some folks that, in the church here, this was some time back, that there was a disaster, I believe, in Texas. Texas that had a, uh, something passed through there. And they came to me and was like, how can we give to these? And then we, we looked and we found a way for folks to give. And so they were, we got that willing giving stirred up, and then we took an offering for them and gave a, gave a good offering to the disaster in Texas. And my point is, maybe something stirs our heart to be willing to give, and we want to, you know, as long as it's within the perimeters to minute of ministry, we want to be able to help facilitate that. So if you have something on your heart, we want to try to encourage. But we need to be willing as we do that and to, say, to seek out, maybe rather than have people just push us, and Lord, help us to give because we love the Lord Jesus and have that willing heart. And in verse 9, let's read this. Verse 9 gives us, well, why do we do that? Why should we, we do anything like that? The Bible says this, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. 
Hallelujah. Thank you for Jesus. Lord, thank you. Because Jesus, you know, we can never give what Jesus gave to leave the, the beauty and the, the, the riches, if you will, of heaven and come down and be with us. He gave that up and made himself poor in the sense he, he left glory. But he was willing to do that so we might be rich. Jesus is our example of that sacrificial and willing giving. And we have to have that same heart that he did because he's changed us to. He's changed us to have a heart that gives, even though we, we can't ever give like he did, to have that same heart and to follow that example. So he's given us so much. He is our Savior. And we need to be, have that same heart that, hey, I'm going to be willing to give what God's called me to give to. Amen. This is not a passage sometimes that gets a lot of, Jumping for joy, going there, but it's important for us because a giving church, God will, I believe, He will, He looks at with favor. He looks at with favor, and we need to find ways to give. And and there's better ways to give than others. That's for sure. That's for sure. And we long to see our giving, just as the Apostle Paul did here with this church, to see the gospel go forward. And that's what we're looking for. And another thing that it mentions in this passage is in verses 13 through 15, we've mentioned it for us, it's called, it calls it here equality. And that's, that's how it, to, to make things more equal. That's how we give to try to balance things out just a bit. And the Bible says this, For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, 14, but by, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack, that their abundance also may supply your lack that there may be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Amen. And when we have that where we take care of each other, as we talked about it. In these seasons, sometimes we do have to care for each other. That equality sets an example for the world, because this is, this is when you use the term equality or things of that sort, it can almost be a politically charged word. But really, the, the government or the world can't really have equality. They can't have that like we can, because, you know, there's always going to be that, that enemy of self. And there's always going to be that desire to abuse and to get skewed and warped because of that self. But for us, we have the ability to look out and see others with his eyes and be able to give by faith, believing that things can be kept fair. I know for my brother and I, my parents tried to keep everything fair. We had to, uh, everything had to be just so for my brother and I, or it was, was going to be a problem. And um, we had to, one would have to take turns sitting in the front of the car, and then the other one had to take the next turn. And it had to be the turn that was the right turn or it wasn't going to work. It had to be, it needed to be 50-50 or not 51-49. It had to be precise. And uh, so that, that's how we were. And uh, I, I was thinking sometime later, uh, when I worked, again, I worked at the school for a while down in Clarksville at Ringgold School. And... I got a little of it back, too, because if any of them felt like a, if any of them got a little something, the other one had to get it, too, and I had, I better keep up with what I was doing, because the equality had to be there, but I'm thankful that for us in the church, we have a, we have the, the need and the privilege and the ability to give with equality and to be open to the ways of the Holy Spirit to love those that are struggling, because there's folks that sometimes they just, they need to lift up, and through his wisdom, may we, we see that happen and, and, and have, have wisdom and understanding. We are stewards of what he gives us, and we try to do our very best to make sure that, that everything is fair. But maybe we have that openness in our hearts to do that. All right. There's a lot in this passage that, that he goes through and, and continues on with. And I just, well, I believe we'll stop there with those notes on, on that, and we'll pick back up next time. But I, I do say for us, I, I have been, there's been many ways this church has blessed me and given, and I, I'm encouraged by that, and my hope is to pass that on and, and look for ways to do that where I give sacrificially, where I give willingly, and where I give believing to, to make things more equal. And um, so many times, though, giving gets sacrificed when, when things get hard. It tends to be one of the things that falls by the wayside. Or missions giving is one we, we encourage folks to get to missionaries and we always talk about that you know in time harder times the missionary giving during the, during the pandemic it went down and we don't want to see the, those things get left behind and sometimes people try to cheat they try to cheat with things and some folks in churches will write a check 
to the church for a tax write-off, and then they'll ask for a refund of some of that money back, but keep that same for the tax write-off. And it's they try to cheat and, and use that basically as a, as a method to help themselves. But I want to remind us that there's no cheating with God. We have to give with a pure heart and, and do that because God is never, not ever mocked. He's never mocked. I will say this, that giving is not always natural. I've had, I've been dealing with that with this, even this week with it. But I tell you, by faith, it's worth it. It's worth it to give. Just like Jesus did, it's worth it to give by faith. So I want to pray for us tonight for those on the internet. And I want to encourage us as, as we look in this time, see how the Lord can encourage you to give. And again, this was something I planned. This is, this is not directly connected to anything going on. This is something that has been planned but may the Lord lead us as to how we're to give in all the situations that God puts before us. And also, we want to remind us of this. Jesus gave his all for us. And so there may be someone watching tonight that needs to give their life to Jesus. We call it give yourself, you know, give your life to Jesus. And that there's a reason for that. We have to give up who we are. And if that's anybody listening tonight, we're praying that the Lord will, through the Holy Spirit, will speak to you. Let's pray and let's believe God. Father, I believe in the name of Jesus. For everyone that's under the sound of my voice tonight, that, Lord, you'll speak to us how we need to give. And, Lord, if there's anyone that needs to give their life to you, if there's anyone right now that they, they're just not sure where they are, they want to give and help, but they haven't really turned themselves over, I pray that you speak to their heart through the Spirit, that they will give and that, Lord, as they lay down their life, just as Jesus laid down his, they lay down their life to you by faith and confess you, dear God, and confess their sins, Lord, we believe you saved. We believe, dear God, that folks that need to be rededicated will be rededicated to you, Lord. And that by, by faith, dear God, we will see you grow us, dear Lord. It won't be, it won't be that we'll, we will um, lose, but we will gain, Lord, because of you and what you've done. Thank you for it, Lord. And Father God, I just pray for the, anyone that needs to make a commitment, dear God, to give in the way you've called us to. Lord, you, you say in your word, tithes and offerings are a way to give. And Lord, if there's someone you're calling for that, speak to their hearts tonight on that. Ask the, Lord, help us to ask you. We ask you, show us how we should give. If it's not money, maybe it's our time, Father God. Show us. Maybe, Father God, you're showing us how we could give of some possession or maybe how we could give to those around us of the, the good bounty, the wisdom, whatever it is, dear God, that you have us to give that we won't hold anything back, Father God, but we will be free givers, dear God, in your, in your help. We worship you for this, dear God. And for those that need to, that are struggling tonight, just even to stay up and they, they need to receive, dear God, we believe you have good gifts for your children tonight. As, and Lord, where there's a missing and a lack, dear God, you are able to provide so that they can give the next time. We believe for good in our church. We believe for good for all those watching. And that, Lord, in these last days, dear Lord, we will not stop giving. And we love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll stop our video here. And if you need to hear from us, again, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. We're praying God's presence will go forth with us and give us an insight because I truly believe in revival. He gives us insights on how we can bless others. We'll see you soon in Christian life. God bless you.